Whoa, did you guys see that right there? This is an M1 iPad Pro with eight gigs of RAM, and this one has 16 gigabytes, which is absolutely crazy for a tablet. So today we're gonna put them head to head and find out are there any performance differences when you're using them normally? And then do we get any performance differences once all that RAM is filled up on the eight gig since that RAM is shared between the CPU and the GPU? We're seeing a lot of people being pressured to spend more money on on the 16 gig version, which you can only get if you buy the one terabyte or two terabyte models because they think they need to have it. And me personally, I need to figure out which one of these do I need to keep. So let's go ahead and put these head to head and find out. Now, before I get into the real world photo and video editing tests, as well as background app management to see if the eight gig will shut down the apps much more often than 16, I wanna go ahead and restart these machines to clear out everything and then do a baseline reading. Let's go ahead and start these and see if one of these turns on faster than the other. Nope, exactly the same. So the RAM is completely clear. Let's go ahead and open up Geekbench 5. As you can see, we have eight gigs on this side and 16 gigs on this side. We're gonna go ahead and start out with a CPU test. Now, personally, I'm really curious to see if we're gonna have any differences. I know sometimes if you have extra SSD space, the SSD will run faster. And as far as RAM, I don't really expect that to be, but who knows, we might get surprised. And bam, we have our results. And it looks like, as far as multi-core, the 8 gig is actually slightly faster. It's not much of a difference, but it is slightly faster, and it's actually slightly slower in single core. And looking through the detailed tests, pretty much everything is matching up which is kind of what I expected, uh, but we will see if these results differ once these machines have their RAM maxed out. Now, I also want to go ahead and do a graphics test. All right, and it looks like in this one, there's actually a bigger gap with the 16 gigabyte coming in at about 2% faster. Still not a huge deal, but let's go ahead and move on to the next test, and that is going to be Geekbench Machine Learning. This is a brand new test. I'm going to check this out right here, and then afterwards, we will start loading up the system with some, maybe some games, some other programs before we do more performance tests. And bam, look at that. The score is almost identical, going slightly to the 8 gig model. And this is running with the Core ML backend. So let's go ahead and close that. And I'm going to start by just opening up each one of these apps over here. That way we can get some different apps loaded in the background. And these are all pretty simple ones. Let's open up Safari and let's open up maybe five or so tabs. So it's interesting. I don't know if you guys saw a difference there at the end. When I would switch to the new tab that I just opened in the background, it would be instantly on. Where here, it actually wouldn't open it until I clicked on it. That was very weird. So let's go ahead and close that. And I'm gonna get into my next test, which is the brand new 3D Mark Wildlife. I'm gonna go into the unlimited mode to get a 4K test. Let's go ahead and get started here. Wow, that is a really fast test. And looking at the results, the frame rate's almost identical, 109.7 compared to 109.4. So it looks like in that test, Nothing has really changed. Let's go ahead and open something else. I'm gonna run GFX Bench's Metal, and it looks like we have 52.76 compared to 53.1, so slightly faster on the eight gig. So far, the results are almost identical. As I've been testing this, the only thing that I've actually noticed is that it seems like the eight gig takes a little bit longer to start up these tests, and I'm not sure if that's because it has to clear out some RAM or who knows, but we're gonna go ahead and push these to the test even more so, I wanna go ahead and open up Google Chrome. We're gonna get some more tabs here. I don't know how you guys are, but me personally, I usually have a ton of tabs open because I'm not great at closing them on my tablets or on my phone. So how about we go ahead and do 10, and what I wanna see, like we saw in Safari, is it gonna actually load up everything in the background by itself, or is it gonna load up once I actually go into that tab? So let's go ahead and press on both of these. Okay, it looks like they're both running the same way and it could be a difference in Chrome. So it doesn't actually load it up until I press into it. All right, those are really quick. And let's go back into Safari and I wanna see if those other tabs remained open. All right, that is open there. Both are open there. Try the last one, both are still open. All right, now what I wanna do is open up a couple games 
just to fill up extra RAM in the background. And then we're gonna get to photo and video editing. I'm gonna start out by opening up Photoshop on both of these. We'll go ahead and open up this high quality stock file. Look at all of that detail right there. So far, so good. And then now, oftentimes I'm also working in Lightroom, so let's open that up. I have these 50 raw images that have a bunch of corrections applied. They're 42 megapixels, quite large, and these are stored locally on the iPads. So let's go ahead and open them up and see if there's any difference in responsiveness so far. No, everything is super smooth. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. That looks great. Let's mess with some of the adjustments. Both of them are awesome. And with all 50 of these edited raw images selected, and with a bunch of background apps and games open, along with Photoshop, let's go ahead and export all of these. I'm gonna go ahead and export these to the camera roll, and we are gonna start our timer. And it looks like they are almost done, and the results are basically identical. Bam, the first one got done, and the second one, Bam, the difference is literally four seconds. We have three minutes and one second compared to three minutes and five seconds. And now I'm gonna keep this whole thing open and I'm gonna go ahead and open up LumaFusion. And here I have a 4K project opened up. And this project is quite difficult. I have a bunch of effects added onto here. I have color grading effects, I have um, some slow motion clips, some that are sped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this here. I'm gonna keep it at 4K. We have 50 megabit per second, so we're gonna have a high quality video. And bam, we are going. Now I gotta say that these new iPads are insanely fast with the new M1. They were actually exporting faster than the M1 MacBook Air running Lightroom, the same exact version, which is crazy. And after this export, we're gonna go ahead and see which applications remained open. So let me go ahead and hit lap. Wow, okay. So that was almost identical, but the eight gig model actually was about two seconds faster. We have 57 seconds compared to 59 seconds for this project. And the last thing I wanna do before we go through all those apps is run another Geekbench 5 test with all those apps open in the background, all those pro apps. Let's go ahead and hit run here. All right, we have our result and it looks like the score is basically the same as before, except actually this time, the 16 gig is both slightly slower in the single core and in the multi-core, but it is very, very close. So that is interesting. You guys saw all those tests. The performance didn't really matter. Uh, iPad OS is very well optimized. It's optimized to be used with two gigabytes of RAM, three gigs, four gigs, six gigs like on the previous iPad Pros, and then now eight and 16. But with that said, let's go ahead and see what stayed open in the background and what got closed. So I'm just gonna go through, we'll swipe through, Geekbench is open. Video editing, open. We have this file ready to be saved wherever we want. So that file is just sitting there. Go through back to Geekbench there. Let's do it this way. Let's go and open up Photoshop. Whoa, did you guys see that right there? Did you guys notice that? The 16 gig model closed for Photoshop there, whereas the eight gig model kept it open. That is really bizarre. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back into, what should we try? Let's try, um, let's try Genshin Impact. Okay, open there. Open there on both. Let's try GFX Bench. Open on both. Let's do 3D Mark. Open on both. Let's do YouTube here. Okay. I had settings opened up right here, but it looks like both of them probably reloaded just what's on the screen. Let's try iMovie. I have a project right here. Both opened up, okay. How about Pages? Same. Keynote? Opened up. Numbers, nothing there. Clips, looks like both of them reloaded. All right, let's do GarageBand. Okay, we're still there on both. I have to say iPad OS is so well optimized. Let's do our Apple Store. Okay, okay, there we go. I thought this one was closed actually for a second, but it actually just refreshed everything faster than our 8 gig model. Let's do, let's do Geekbench ML. Crazy, open on both. Photos, 
Okay, it looks like both of them reset, or at least to this uh, viewer. And then the last thing that I'm interested in is Safari and Chrome. So let's start out with Safari. I was saving that. Bam, okay. Same exact thing there. Next tab. Both there. Got an ad pop up. All right, that makes it difficult. Last one. Both opened up right here, the video stopped. And the last one is gonna be Chrome because we all know how Chrome runs, at least you know on Windows and Mac. Who knows on iPad, but I guess we'll see. Three, two, one, bam. Okay, we don't wanna paste there, but at least this base tab opened up. Let's carefully switch to the next one. Wow, great. That one's awesome, no issues. Wow. So with all of that, what is the final verdict and which version would I recommend buying? Well, as you guys saw, the performance is basically the same, even with all those different apps open in the background and then we're doing crazy photo editing, raw files, 42 megapixel from a pro camera, we're doing 4K video editing, Photoshop open, all of that performance did not matter. The 8 gig was not any slower at all. And then as far as opening apps, the 8 gig actually did better. It kept a ton of apps open, games, productivity, everything, tabs, and it actually kept Photoshop open as well, whereas the 16 gig closed it. That was very weird. Maybe it was just a software bug, but both of these work great. And eight gigabytes of RAM is not a limitation. So personally, I would not spend the extra money to get a model that has a terabyte or two terabyte of storage if you want the extra RAM, keep in mind, Apple is charging 200 bucks more this year for the one terabyte option than last year because of the extra RAM that they pair with it. They don't give you the option to have eight gigs or 16 otherwise. So I don't think it's worth it. And you also have to keep in mind that developers, when new apps come out, they are gonna optimize for eight gigs of RAM, not for 16, because most people are gonna buy the lower end units. So that is my opinion. Now, if you guys wanna see more videos, click that circle above to help us reach 1 million subscribers before the end of this year. And then right over there, we have two great iPad videos that you guys will definitely enjoy. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.